Hello! My name is Emma Tobias. I know I wore this sweater in my last video, but it is a dang cozy sweater, so I'm gonna wear it. Um, today is a very special day. It is that time of year that I'm gonna be doing a little less lonely tag. Um, a little lonely tag is a tag I created three or four years ago when I started this channel all about books that make us feel a little less lonely. Um, every year I kind of put a different spin on it depending on my mood. So my first year was very simply books that made me feel less lonely and then through the years depending on what's going on in my life or what's going on in the world I change it um, uh, to match that feeling and that mood. This year I wanted to do books that make me feel cozy, that give me the warm fuzzies. Um, I am a very busy person currently and I have a lot of stress in my life and I have a lot of things that I don't have control over in my life and I feel like I'm constantly just going and I want to read books that make me feel cozy, that make me feel comforted or really lost in the story or the world and that's what I want to focus on. It's very odd of me to talk about this, but it's also something that's been really great for my mental health when I get a chance to kind of like delve into a really cozy world or setting or place or a, uh, have conversations with characters that make me feel that way. And that's what I want to talk about. All right, let's get into it. The first book that I want to talk about is a book I read a couple years ago, and that is Four Seasons in Rome by Anthony Doerr. Anthony Doerr wrote um, All the Light We Cannot See, which I have not read. I don't know if I'm ever going to read it, but I have it. Um, Four Seasons in Rome is um, a book that's the, the subtitle is On Twins, Insomnia, and the bi Biggest Funeral in the History of the World. So Anthony Doerr, a few years ago, um, was given a grant to go over to Rome to spend a year writing and studying um, and his wife had just had twin boys, and so he takes his young family to Rome to live for a year. And he just talks about it. He talks about his life in Rome for a year. He muses about the world, about what's going on in the world. He talks about his newborn babies and his wife, um, and his life, day-to-day -day life in Rome. It gets very existential and full of, like, philosophical ramblings. Um, but I love that. I really love the nature of this book to not have really a point. The point is just to live in this beautiful city and figure out what's going on in your life. Um, he talks about being a parent, being a son. Um, he talks about religion as he's in Rome around the time that this book is written. And while he was there, uh, the Pope, John Paul II, dies. And he talks about death and life and this crazy funeral that he witnesses. I love this book. It made me feel warm and fuzzy because it was so honest and also because he writes about Rome in a way that's so lush and beautiful. I really love the way he talks about place and that is a theme that goes through all the books that I'm going to talk about is the writing of place. This book is great and if you haven't read it and you like books like this then I would definitely read it. The next book I'm going to talk about I read very recently over the summer, and that is The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bifel. I read this when I was in London, um, and I just loved it so much. Uh, Sean Bifel is a bookseller. He owns The Bookshop in Wigtown, Scotland, and he basically writes about the day-to-day -day life in the bookshop over the course of about a year or a little less than a year, or a little more than a year, I can't remember. And it's just these little short diary entries where he just talks about the days that he's living. Um, it might be the fact that I read this book while I was on the tube, I read this book while I was going to Stonehenge, I read this book while I was in front of the Eiffel Tower that made this book make me feel the warm and fuzzy. Literally the places that I was reading it in were beautiful and amazing and dreamlike to me as a small town girl from South Carolina, but this book itself has a great sense of place. It's incredibly cozy. He talks about like the weather changes and what's going on in the bookshop and him putting on coats in the winter and shedding them in the summer and the customers coming in and out and his sassy interactions with people and going to these old houses and, and looking at all of these used books and deciding what books he's going to take with him, going on these treasure hunts to find these books and going to auctions. If you love books and reading, this is definitely the book for you. It made me so happy. 
and made me feel so cozy and warm and fuzzy and really grateful that I get to be in a book community, if that makes sense. Um, I love this book so much. Um, and I, and I really, really appreciated it. And I appreciate it more the longer that I have not read it. It's a book that's kind of stayed with me. After I finished it, I was like, oh, I really like that. And now it's kind of stayed with me. And I, I've been kind of yearning to read another book like it. Big fan, obviously. Okay, next we have a book that's not set abroad because it's set in a fantastical land. And that's Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I read this book um, during Booktubeathon, so I talked about it fairly recently. But I, this is one of my favorite books I read this year. This is a middle grade book about a girl named Morgan Crow who kind of has a life where no one cares about her and if they do care about her they're afraid of her. She has a curse um, which means that like everyone thinks that everything that bad happens in her town is because of her and she's supposed to die on her like I think 11th birthday but she ends up being picked up by this kind of eccentric man who takes her to this place called Nevermore which is this like world between worlds this like secret world and she starts um, participating in trials to get into this special sort of adventuring school that's really hard to get into. I love the universe in this book. I love books that have like really intense magic systems or really intense kind of like intricacies and systems like that. One of my favorite writers is Jasper Ford and Jasper Ford does this very well. All of his books make me feel the warm and fuzzies but I didn't want to include all of them. Probably not Shades of Grey but his entire Air Affair series gives me the warm and fuzzies. But I love the way that like this world is, is talked about and you can feel it's so big and there's so much detail to it and the characters are really just cozy and fun and don't take themselves too seriously but have a lot of heart. I love it. I'm a big fan. I'm really excited about the sequel that comes out in November. Um, love this one, obviously. So I have four more. We're getting through it. The next one is Gaudy Night by Dorothy L. Sayers. I wrote um, it's like this paper about this book for a research grant that I was um, given in 2000 and like 16, so when I was graduating college. And uh, Gaudy Night is a book in the Lord Peter Whimsey series, and this book follows specifically Harriet Vane, who shows up in Strong Poison for the first time. So if you haven't read Strong Poison, I would read Strong Poison, and then I would read this book. There is a book in between, but I think that Strong Poison and this one um, is probably good enough. Um, this book is so good. I love it so much. Obviously, I have lots of tabs for my research paper that I never took out because I'm lazy and also because I kind of like having them there. It reminds me of writing the paper. But Gaudy Knight is about Harriet Vane going back to solve a mystery at her alma mater, which is a women's college. Um, this book was written in the 1930s, so women's colleges were, you know, the common thing for women who had to go to college or went to college. But um, I went to a women's college in 20, you know, 16, 15, and I still found this book incredibly relevant, which that gave me the warm and fuzzies just to read a book that so mirrored my experiences at a women's college. But also I love this book one, because of the way that she talks about the place, um, the way she talks about this old, beautiful, I think it's Oxford or Cambridge, it's one of the two, um, and this women's college within those one of those universities. And I love the way she writes about you know, the, the hallways and the dining hall and all of these things and the lawn. But I also love the way that characters are written in this book. They're very complex and very interesting. All of the characters have their own opinions and most of the characters are women and they have differing opinions about feminism, about their lives, and about working versus staying at home and very modern arguments that is, that are talked about in this book. And I love Harriet Vane herself. She's a woman who's so confused about what she wants to do. She doesn't know if that if by following her heart and going with the man she loves, she's making herself less independent, she's jeopardizing her values and her career and all these things she's worked so hard for in the society that says that she can't do them. But at the same time, she really wants to be with the person she loves. Um, she's also, this also is, a, is also a book about a man and a woman learning to deserve each other, which I think is great. I love books where you have two people who are trying to deserve each other. I think it's really powerful and, and shows a real partnership instead of a romance. And I am a big fan of Gaudy Knight. So next we have two books that I think kind of go together 
in a way, because the writing is so lush and beautiful. We have Chocolat by Joanne Harris. This book is about a woman who um, moves to this small uh, French town during Lent and opens up a chocolate shop and causes a little bit of trouble. This book is so cozy. Uh, the way that this world is written about is beautiful and amazing, but the way that chocolate and food and pastries is written about is gorgeous. It's a little magical. It's really sweet. It's really heartwarming. I, I love shock a lot. And then the other book I have here is Time Was Soft There by Jeremy, Jeremy Mercer. Uh, Jeremy Mercer uh, was a journalist in Canada when he decides to go to Paris and he lives in Shakespeare and Company. And this is a true story. Shakespeare Company, if you don't know, is a very famous par uh, bookstore in Paris. And he goes and lives in the bookstore, which is something that is common or it was common then. I don't know if people can still do it. Um, this book is about finding yourself in a beautiful old city, about surrounding yourself by the ghosts of famous writers, and about figuring out what you want to do. Um, I love the way this book talks about Paris. It's beautiful, um, and it really talks about it realistically, yet still in a way where you're like, that's Paris! Um, I'm a big fan. And not a lot of people talk about this book. I learned about this book through BookTube in about 2011, so it's been a long time, but it's it's an all-time favorite. And then, finally, the last book I want to talk about is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day I was adapted into a movie with Amy Adams like 10 or so years ago, and I love that movie. But I really love the book. Um, it's about a woman named Miss Pettigrew who's like an aging spinster uh, when she decides, or she is a nanny, and she's supposed to take care of some children, but she ends up taking care of this, like, young American socialite who can't really take care of herself. And during a really whirlwind day, she learns to have more confidence, um, be freer, and not necessarily follow society's expectations for an older single woman. Uh, I love the way this book is written. It's really jaunty and fun. But it's also a book that feels incredibly powering, empowering and a book that allows you to just go, okay, I can do this. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Miss Pettigrew. I'm a big fan of all these books. I keep saying that. So, anyway. So those are the books that make me feel a little less lonely and a lot cozy. I would love to know the books that make you feel that way. And if you want to make a video like this, I would love for you to do so. I'm going to tag some people on Twitter. So if I've tagged you and you have a minute to do it, go for it. I know tag videos aren't very cool anymore, but this is a tradition that I've had. I've kept going for a while, and I want to keep it going. So have a lovely day. Bye.